In this video, we will discuss a simple universal H-bridge module using BJT's N channel MOSFETs. This module, which you can see on your screen, can be integrated with any standard oscillator IC, such as IC4047, or ICSG3525, or even IC555, to create a highly efficient H-bridge inverter. Using four N-channel MOSFETs in an H-bridge configuration is considered to be the most efficient topology because N-channel MOSFETs have much lower RDS on compared to their P-channel counterparts. Lower RDS on means lower drain to source resistance, which ensures lower heat dissipation and higher current transfer across the MOSFETs. However, creating an H-bridge using N-channel MOSFETs can be difficult since it involves a relatively complex bootstrapping network. The bootstrapping network refers to a small circuit network around the gates of the high side MOSFETs which enables the high side MOSFETs to conduct freely by ensuring that its gate voltage is always around 12 volts higher than its instantaneous source voltage. Now, let's try to understand how our universal H-bridge circuit module using N-channel MOSFETs works. Let's assume an instantaneous moment where the left side oscillator input is low and the right side oscillator input is high. In this situation, the left side BC547 is turned off due to the absence of the base switching voltage, and the left side 10UF50V capacitor is charged up to the battery voltage level through the 1N414148 diode. Now, the left high side MOSFET gets its voltage through the 1N4148 diode and the 1K resistor and makes an attempt to conduct. However, as soon as the MOSFET drain voltage reaches its source terminal, and exceeds its gate voltage 12V, the conduction stalls, because as we know, ideally for any MOSFET to conduct, its gate potential must be around 10 volts higher than its source voltage. This is where our BC547 and 10UF bootstrapping network comes into action. When the left high side MOSFET drain voltage reaches the source terminal, this voltage is forced into the 10UF capacitor through its negative terminal. This source voltage entering the negative terminal of the 10UF capacitor now comes in series with the existing 12 volts stored inside the 10UF capacitor. So as the source voltage rises, it pushes the stored potential inside the 10UF higher, so that the total voltage at the gate of the MOSFET is always 12 volts higher than the source voltage of the MOSFET. So when the source voltage is 12 volts, it adds up with the internal 12 volts of the 10UF capacitor producing 12 volts plus 12 volts which is equal to 24 volts at the gate of the high side MOSFET. This means the effective gate voltage is now the difference between the total gate voltage and the source voltage, that is 24 volts minus 12 volts, which is equal to 12 volts, or if suppose the drain supply is 100 volts. Then the effective gate voltage will be 100 volts plus 12 volts minus 100 volts, which is equal to 12 volts. This ensures that the gate voltage of the high side MOSFET is always held at 12 volts higher than its source voltage. This in turn enable the high side N-channel MOSFETs to conduct freely and efficiently, regardless of the applied drain voltage level. This may not be possible if P-channel MOSFETs are used, although P-channel MOSFET wouldn't require a bootstrapping. A high side P-channel MOSFET might not require a bootstrapping, but the main disadvantage of using P-channel high side MOSFETs is its drain voltage cannot exceed the gate voltage, which simply means that if the oscillator IC output is 12 volts, then the load voltage cannot exceed 12 volts, which appears to be a big drawback, which is completely eliminated if N-channel MOSFETs are used. That's it. This concludes our tutorial on a simple H-bridge circuit module using N-channel MOSFETs which can be used to transform any center-tapped inverter into an H-bridge inverter. Thanks for watching.